All right, now we're going to remove our ignition plate. Notice how I prop the motor up on side so it's easier for me to work from. I don't necessarily want to be down here. But before I ever take off anything that's timing related, what did I say I'd like to do? I want to mark it. So I don't care where I do it, but I just want to take and basically create my own mark. Now what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to be able to put this back into that same position as before. Can you see the paint mark there? if you're able to. The one thing about this ignition on this Kawasaki is I can see all three bolts are slotted. What does that tell me when I have slotted bolts? Adjustable. It tells me that it's adjustable. Which tells me that there's going to be a procedure for putting that back together. Now you could get in here and you can try and uh, uh, see if it'll just come off with hand tools. If not, you want to use your impact again. And what did I always say I like to use? An extension on the bit first. I need to identify what size this. Most, almost always your ignition plate bolts, the big ones that mount, are a number three. So we'll make sure you have a number three bit. I'm going to take my hammer, give it a good whack. The tool should hold itself. Remember me showing you a couple different times now? If possible, attempt to turn it by hand and just see if that extra leverage will work. If not, switch back to your metal hammer and pop it, pop it loose. Go ahead and start to turn this over again. switch it back to a regular screwdriver. You be really careful not to slip with the screwdriver here because on the stator we have those fine wires. If I nick that wire, I ruin the whole plate, correct? Yep. And that would be a bad day. Now the other thing we're going to do, and on your lab sheet it talks about inspecting the grommet. What are we looking for when we inspect that rubber grommet? How can I tell if this grommet was doing a good job? Look at this motor right here and tell me if that grommet was that grommet or gasket was doing its job. So either last person or hold this did not use silicone on this grommet or the gasket itself failed and we uh, we had a problem. Inside of here should be clean and dry. If we allow dirt in here, what are we potentially going to hurt? What's spinning in here? The crankshaft on the crank seal. So if we get dirt in there, we could end up uh, prematurely uh, damaging that seal. Does that make sense? Guys, one thing about the Kawasaki here is what sucks about these is the crank seals have to be installed from the inside of the engine cases. <coughs> There's no external uh, way to put the seal in. You guys walk through here, make a loop through here, and you're going to see that this seal area is protected on the south side, meaning we drive the seal in from the inside. Everybody walk through here, please. Now, the other, the other people do this a lot are snowmobiles. You can't always change a, a snowmobile oil seal from the outside. You've got to split the cases and drive them from the inside. Keep, keep going, guys. There's no way to push it that way. We have to drive the seal from the inside, which means splitting the cases. Right here, these lips of these bosses here, there's no way to install the seal this way. It has to be installed from the inside. So it's a real quick way to identify that. Now this would be a great opportunity if we were pressure testing this to be able to actually test the seal and see if it were leaking, right? It would be a good time for that. All right, let's go ahead and stop that one.